Hey, good morning everybody. This is Rob, back with my channel Slash All. I'm just out for a morning walk here. Got my coffee, so that's exciting. Looks like I see plenty of kitty cats out today. I don't see that. I haven't seen that one kitty cat around, but I haven't. I haven't been out in the morning lately. I've been getting my walks in just different times of the day. I also had my breakfast. I normally, uh, normally, uh, don't eat breakfast and go for these walks. Uh, but I had a lot of videos to upload today. They should be uploading now. This is my workout from yesterday. Should all be done in about a half hour. One of these two code cups really keep the coffee warm. Oh, hey. It's kind of hard to see, but there's the kitty cat over there. That might belong to somebody on the other side of the church. I don't know. I thought she belonged to one of these uh, families over here, but I don't think so. This is that cat I normally see right over there. Yeah, I wonder who that kitty cat belongs to. Let's see several newer cats coming out every day. It's ridiculously hot here, but there's enough trees to hang out under to stay cool, I guess. The right breeze. Probably one of these days I'm going to take more time to walk the neighborhood here and walk a few other places. Uh, but I just I never seem to have the time to do any of that. Usually it's work, work, and more work, and then the projects I'm working on. I finally got all the first town maps made, uh, except the dungeon map and the, uh, the RPG I'm making, which is kind of nice. Um, as soon as I, uh, as soon as I uh, uh, get this first town made, I'll populate it with NPCs and stuff like that. I'm just kind of putting something together from scratch as I go forward here. And then uh, I gotta get me a uh, couple of easels and other things just to do uh, storyboard writing. So that's really exciting. I keep going here. It's not warm yet, but I can tell probably around 9 o'clock it's just going to get very warm. Mm. It's really hot. I just made this coffee a little while ago. Yeah, this, uh, this cup was just shipped to me one day, and, uh, along with a bunch of other stuff, so 
That was really cool. And, uh, that all, that all worked out. It was really weird. I thought it came with, like, a safety whistle, but it turned out it was, like, a straw, but I've never seen a metal straw before. Wasn't quite sure what to make of it. But the whole box was just themed around safety. Had like safety bands and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. I really want to get that JRPG pack and uh, make something out of that. I do have to get back to the coding studies though and everything else I'm working on. But uh, that will that will all come in a little in a little while. There's usually so much going on at work on a Monday. Uh, any type of uh, any type of project I have going, I just I tend to skip on a Monday. I don't do much of anything on Mondays. But, you know, I was I was kind of excited because I uh, I uh, I, th I think I already said this. I got my first town I got all the maps created. Now I just need to populate it with NBC yeah, uh, NPCs and other characters. And then create a dungeon map because they got a starter dungeon in the first town. And it's not a complex game I'm making. It's like... This type of RPG I'm making, it would have been like popular way back in like uh, like 95 or something like that. You know, something on Sega Genesis or Nintendo. It's about what the graphics add up to. And then if I want to make anything more complex than that, I kind of have to do it from the ground up. And I'm thinking about Unity Engine for that. is rather hot. <laughs> fire engine is going. Okay, so that's what that was.
I wonder if this is what real storytelling is like. It's just, you start fleshing out something without any plan and you put it together as you go along. I kind of wonder about that. Because I see a lot of videos about how to fix, how to fix storytelling and manga and stuff like that. But, um, but I kind of wonder if that's like, what real storytelling creativity is like you flesh something out as you go along and that's why you see little plot holes and details not adding up sometimes in media that's just something I'm wondering about I don't know, I mean, you can, uh, you can add your own, your own information and scripts to, uh, to the RPG Maker. I think it'd be, I think it'd be pretty cool to do some, uh, some, um, what other words I'm looking for? <sighs> some, like, Bob Stoss... Bob Ross style paintings as backgrounds for some of the towns and some of the uh, some of the uh, buildings and stuff like that. I think that would be really cool. And then you just have the characters interact as if they were in a normal village and stuff like that. You know, enter buildings and stuff like that. Best use is the best. You kind of see relics like this from time to time, and that is old phone booths. Goes right up to the line up there, uh, but there's no phone inside of it. 
you can see the same thing in like uh, downtown Seattle. You can see relics of the past in Pioneer Square. Same in San Francisco. So, uh, yeah, that's just something you can see from time to time. And I, I can't remember the can't remember an example of the last time I oh, got coffee on me. Cannot remember an example of the last time I saw a working phone phone booth. I'm trying to remember, I think it was over 10 years ago. This is way before I decided to get myself a cell phone and all that stuff. And if I could swing, if I could uh, swing it without a cell phone, I would. Just get myself a regular landline. So I finally, uh, finally got myself like a crunchy roll account. Let's start watching what's on there. A lot of good, uh, a lot of good shows on there from what I hear. I wonder if somebody is building a house there. Uh, that used to be just an empty field. There was a tree there, but it fell over some years ago. Like right next to uh, right next to the street. <sighs> There's another kitty cat just staring at me. That house is two of them. And then there's a couple of strays around here. I don't know about the one I normally interact with. I don't know if that one, that one is a stray. Oh, I got, I got some good news. I finally got the uh, cameras that I wanted priced out. Let me go pick those up for my uh, walking videos and YouTube videos. Do much better resolution. And then, uh, get a, uh, like a camera for the vehicle and just show more of the area. Is that underneath there? Oh, I was wondering what that was. like the sun is finally starting to come out. Blocked by clouds though. Kind of looking around here.
It's hot. It's ridiculously hot. Oh, hey, there's that kitty cat. Just kind of hanging out there in the bushes. Just wondering where that cat went. <laughs> Just kind of doing its own thing. It's kind of what I was looking around for from where that cat went. There's a bunny that I just saw. Strangely enough, from uh, from what I've seen outside my window, for some reason, cats and bunnies get along. I'm not quite sure why, but they kind of do. <laughs> Maybe that's only a thing around here. Ooh, I gotta schedule a, uh, an appointment with the mechanic here pretty soon. Drop off my vehicle. I think I will be uh, dropping off my vehicle with American Pride mechanic shop just so I can get whatever is really wrong with it fixed. They uh, fixed a bunch of other things on it and they've done quite a good job. Nothing wrong with the engine but uh, like I said there seems to be a problem with fuel getting, in getting to the engine and I like to get my AC recharged so I can get like the coldest AC imaginable. That would be great. Here. I'm working on uh, a lot of OT so I can finally get the last few bits of the car fixed so I'm excited about that. Excuse me. I shouldn't be tired with all this coffee I'm drinking. I think I ate a little bit too much food for breakfast, but that's okay. I can work it off a little bit, uh, a little, probably tomorrow. I don't normally go for seconds, but I don't... I don't remember if I ate dinner last night or not, but I was pretty hungry this morning. cops driving around this area.
probably pretty close to a police department just on the other side of these houses. And you know, it, it's kind of, it's kind of in a strange location. There's a, there's a police department, a library, like a mini city hall, social services, all kinds of stuff just tucked behind a bunch of houses. And you, you wouldn't know it was there unless, unless you like read some signs or something like that. But it's just kind of like a, kind of in a spot that's it's not very city like so it's so it's a little it's a little strange to me but I mean a little further up there was a uh, there was a Civil War monument and a much older courthouse so they tend to stack those things in the same area from what I saw when I when I uh, worked in Merced, mostly civil service buildings are just stacked on top of each other near old civil service buildings. And then those older buildings become museums or something like that. So that's just how I've kind of seen it work out. when it comes to civil service buildings. Then I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking based on all, all the like historical information I've read, this used to be like this area I'm in, used to be the primary area for Newport News. Based on the two old courthouses that I saw and uh, all like the battles that were fought here and stuff like that. And there's a mill down the road. I forget the name of the mill, but it used to be like the only mill for this area. And then, you know, there's like, there's information about Civil War battles being fought there as well, as well. So, you know, it's, it's all over the place around here. Uh, and then I'm guessing, like, the city growth just kind of grew all around it. So, they have all kinds of, like, um, like, historical sites civil service buildings all tucked away behind like houses and homes that you wouldn't know that were there unless you've been in this area for a little while or follow the signs So, uh, that's just something I find interesting about this area. You never see that type of, uh, you would never see that type of, uh, uh, growth back home in, uh, in Seattle. Instead, it kind of grew differently. Uh, so, like, Pioneer Square sits 12 to 15 feet above ground level. So, the city started building on top of itself and going higher. instead of spreading outwards. And that's because, uh, that's because like at ground level, Seattle is pr prone to some flooding and stuff like that. So, uh, so that's something That is, uh, that's something you tend to see out at that, throughout that region, even, 
even the local uh even the local rivers would flood the uh would flood the region i'm not talking about like major historic flooding i'm talking about you know just like natural flooding at ankle level that's just kind of pesky to deal with so they ended up sinking a few islands in that area diverting a couple of rivers some rivers go underground and that's how they got flooding controlled in that area and that's all on historic signs there too that you can just read about that It's just really warm out here. Yeah, usually in the summer by by uh, by nine o'clock, it gets warm out here. But it's uh. gonna start cooling down here pretty soon that will be nice Coming up to the end of my walk here. So that's going to be good. And then just 20% uh, more Pepsi. Huh, interesting. Just reading a sign there about a. Uh, about Pepsi and stuff like that. I don't know, man. It's it's kind of it's kind of difficult for me. I, I like Pepsi, but I come from a uh, a Coca-Cola family. 